Well, um, I am Sarah Morgan, CEO and founder of Nanolit Technologies, and we manufacture a circadian rhythm lighting system. We use quantum dots with the first in the world to use quantum dots in lighting. And uh, uh, over the 10 year journey of developing uh, this technology, uh, we've hit a number of interesting barriers. And one of the biggest ones is the lighting industry asking if there is a, my favorite phrase, a there there when it comes to the impact of light on health. And many of the discussions when, um, when we're discussing what our technology does inevitably comes back to, um, I'm only paying $150 for an LED light. Why am I paying extra for this? And what that tells me is that there is a fundamental disconnect about the biological impact of light. And uh, what I see happening is that the lighting industry is not turning to chronobiologists and circadian rhythm researchers to find out about their decades of work in this field. Instead, they're trying to apply an engineer's approach, a photon uh, focused solution. But actually, this is evolutionary. This is a biological um, uh, process that we're facilitating when we're modulating light for uh, humans and plants to optimize their uh, lighting environment so that it emulates the full spectrum of daylight and the low blue content that we evolved under until 170 years ago. Uh, in the evenings, which is typically fire or candle. So um, I believe we're in the basement of lighting innovation right now. And so this uh, return on investment uh, calculation um, that we have begun working on also reflects that we are in the basement of understanding around the full physiological impact of light. And while I know many of us on this call have developed very cool innovations. Um, there's still a long way to go, a lot of innovation yet to happen. So I wanted to give that basis for my talk so that uh, you understand where I'm coming from. Okay, so um, we know that uh, lighting when used for health and wellness can have significant impact. Um, there's at least 300 plus white papers out there, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with some of them, um, especially the ones that are easy to reference. Um, now, the detrimental effects of fatigue and deteriorating mental health, of course, are always hard to calculate, um, but they do extend beyond individual employees and significantly impact both businesses and economy at large. Uh, I know that you're referencing 410 billion, we referenced $680 billion lost globally. Um, the toll on employee well-being is evident in the healthcare expenditures of these companies or the employees. And on average, according to Harvard, companies, companies spend $3,500 per employee in the US on healthcare costs annually. Absenteeism poses a significant challenge with an average of 3.4 days lost per year um, per employee. And the numbers go on and on and on, and I'm happy to discuss these more later, um, but I think these are some of the key ones listed here. So um, we position ourselves as providing the most accurate sunlight emulation in the market. Um, and I'm sure a few companies here can say the same thing. But um, we've focused on reducing energy using quantum dots. Uh, we've reduced installation time by making sure every light has its own brain. And of course, that reduced costs and averaging between a one to three year payback uh, based on healthcare. Um, and the technology is used by Well and LEED to set the platinum standards for lighting in the built environment. We've extrapolated a 10 year lifetime on the technology, but of course we all know from LED uh, technology uh, that's legacy, um, some of those predictions get a bit wobbly um, in reality. So we're extrapolating 10 years. 
And I think the key here that uh, we feel is our niche and uh, an area that will grow is that every schedule of lighting delivered is research backed with a white paper that can validate its impact on the users. Um, and we can do those updates over the air after the lights are installed. So here we get back, here we get to the payback section. And here's a model that we did um, using um, Brigham and Women's Hospital uh, Harvard National Safety Council's calculator based on 100 employees. We estimated 200 lights based on two lights per person and the material costs based on our current fi finished product, including installation is $115,000. So um, we know that that's at least double what people are anticipating to pay. And so uh, the reason we worked on this uh, calculator was because, again, uh, we're having to shoehorn into the thinking of electrical engineering, which was, you know, what's the payback period based on lumens per watt? So, OK, what's the payback period based on the health savings? And this then opens up the opportunity for subscription sales instead of CapEx sales. So. Um, through this calculator, it was estimated that annually fatigue is costing this company with 100 employees $158,000, each light costing $500, number of lights 200, with an estimated payback period of between 9 to 27 months. And this is the range that we would love to discuss uh, further today. Because the, the data that Brigham and Women's Hospital is using is quite focused. And it's not just about um, insomnia. It's also relating to sleep apnea or restless leg syndrome. But, you know, if we look at the data below, uh, if someone's sitting next to a window, they get on average 46 more minutes of sleep per night. Um, they're 56% less drowsy, 10% increase in learning. And I think probably one of the things most important for the for the office is a 200% improvement in problem solving. And that doesn't matter if you have sleep apnea, restless leg syndrome, or any of the other issues that can be related to sleep. This is a, a baseline across all of the people in the studies. Now, if we look at this uh, product's return on investment based on energy savings, we're at nine and a half years. Um, so you combine those two and potentially you can uh, uh, state a, a payback period of eight months. So um, I think Joanne has joined us. Yes. OK. Um, yes. So I, yes, I'm here. I'm, I'm very sorry because uh, when uh, I got the meeting invite, it showed up as 11 o'clock on my calendar. So I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> Not at all. You perfect timing. OK, good. Okay, so um, as Sarah mentioned, um, this can be moved from an operating, uh, from a capital expense to an operating, um, I mean, away from a CapEx expense by using a um, subscription type model. And this is very similar to lighting as a service. And um, so what this chart shows is the three boxes. The first box would be the operating expense without wellness lighting, just with what they have right now, that's what a company uh, would be paying. And then if they put um, the lighting in and they used our subscription model and our uh, performance contract, um, you see that the blue box, the operating expenses goes way down because of all those savings that Sarah just showed on the previous slide there would be a payment to us, which is the green box. And then um, above that would be the savings. So even though they've, they've put in this um, improved lighting and uh, they are paying us uh, a payment, the payment to us is going to be less than the savings. So they still recognize the savings. Depending on the term of the contract, if it's a three, five, 10 year or whatever, when the contract is over, all of those savings then becomes the owner. And that's why you see the red box uh, growing after the contract. So basically what we're doing here is it's not gonna be a capital expense. It, it's, um, it comes off being a capital expense because this is a service contract. Um, 
it'll be a subscription model. So as the research develops, the lighting schedules change, uh, we automatically update and then there, there's no maintenance for the, uh, for the owner, um, Nano that uh, will, will do the, uh, the ownership. So basic and, and the payback um, is generated, the payback is using the savings generated. So it's like a, a lighting, at, at, you know, we've seen this before as lighting um, as a service. This is really wellness as a service. Thank you, Joanne. Um, yeah, and I'm aware that the next slide is us showing off our customers. So I don't know if I should skip that for now. Uh, we if can't. You're, if, you, if you're fine with this, you can do that. Or if you're not fine with it, you don't do it. So simple. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I just uh, I, I was aware as I was presenting that I was talking about Nanolit maybe more than I should have. So before I continued to do that, I should ask permission. Yeah. So uh, we would love this to be a conversation. Uh, and we're interested in uh, longer term participating in the development of this calculator. I think it's uh, really what the industry needs. Uh, I've been working in the US market primarily for the last seven years, and there is a halt in innovation, and uh, there needs to be a push. Um, and of course, the research division of Philips is all being laid off. So there is huge opportunity uh, for really uh, pushing the lighting industry into the next phase of development. I feel that right now we're trying to sell smartphones to people who use rotary phones and there needs to be significant education uh, to make that step change in how people think about lighting and stop trying to shoehorn circadian or healthy lighting, whatever you want to call it, stop trying to shoehorn it into an illumination product. Thank you. Okay. Yes, it's an operational fee. You're muted, Jan. Okay, good, yeah. Um, thank you, Sarah, for this uh, very, in and Joanne, for uh, your, your uh, interesting um, presentation. This is indeed the way to go if we could, would be able to really quantify the benefits of good light and uh, light that uh, has a positive impact on your bio clock and as a consequence on your sleep on your energy on your mood on your um, mental health uh, then it's almost certain that people will faster step up to um, to good light uh, indoors uh, while now they see don't see the need for it because they don't make the link between what you call fatigue costs and uh, the way the lighting is uh, not helping people to uh, to reduce their fatigue. Um, so thank you very much. I think th this is great. Uh, shall I first open it to questions from the attendance? I saw a couple of chats from Maarten. Maarten's question is the Nanolits pay-per-use subscription. Uh, can you explain your question, Maarten? Um, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. No, it was already answered. Um, the question is, yes, it's then an operational expense. So the pay-per-use is then, uh, I guess, uh, a monthly or, or a timely quarterly payment. And not any more a purchase, which which I think is very wise, um, given that the um, the there's substantial proof of all these cost savings. So yeah, that's the way to go. And and um, Sarah already answered that. So so uh, she, okay. I I, okay. I thought you said it's an operational expense then. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Um, there is another question from Marina. Would it be possible to share the references cited through the presentation? Uh, let's, ah, there it is. <laughs> OK, thank you. So that will be possible. Um, are there 
Any other questions? Yeah, can I can I ask a question, um, Jan? Sure. Yeah, Martin. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. So, so one question is related to the um, the classical paradox, uh, especially in office lighting, which, which means that the owner of the building is not the user of the building. So the the, the person who is benefiting from good light is not um, not the person who is should make the investment. So how to bypass and mitigate that paradox? Do you, you see this also happening or is your uh, proposal a, a way to mitigate this? Yeah, I'm sure Joanne has a slightly different answer. I'll jump in first, I, if that's OK. Um, well, fortunately, right now uh, for lighting companies, com uh, corporates are having a very hard time drawing their employees back to the office. They are quite desperate. So I would say right now is a very good moment where the leasors are finding any way they can to invest in bringing their employees back to the office. In fact, we've sold to two companies who um, whose buildings are managed by CBRE, who I'm sure you all know, and then the other one, which is Canadian only, I believe, called Oxford Properties. And uh, there was no concern there um, by the corporates that um, you know CBRE was getting a, something for free. That's good to hear. I, I just want to add, too, that it depends on the leasing arrangements and the length Oh, it's in the beginning of the lease where it could be a 10 year lease and, and the payback is uh, less than the length of time of the lease. Um, that that will make an impact because, uh, of course, the user pays. Uh, they realize the savings and and they ha and then in that case, they would do the upgrades to the building. OK, yeah, thanks. Yeah, um, I see also uh, Joachim. Um, yeah, yeah, kind of looking. Yeah, I have a question. Um, so, or, or so, a sort of perhaps a comment. Um, okay. So, so I think it's really uh, fascinating, and I, I think it's it's really interesting to begin to sort of include these data in what the value of these lighting systems is. But one thing that I would mention that we've seen lately is that. One thing is sort of the well-being of employees, but we can see in some of the companies that we're talking to that actually lighting taps very much into actually being able to attract sort of high level skills. So they actually use it to attract uh, sort of uh, uh, employees. Uh, so that could also be an sort of a way to, to, to look at the value of these uh, systems. Um, Another thing that we, we see here, in at least in, in, in uh, uh, where we're sitting, is that some of these global UN goals are actually being uh, used uh, to make decisions on fairly high level. So if you're able to tap into these with a lighting system, it might actually be able to, um, to get a, a bit more sort of wavelength with some of the individuals that are, are making these um, investments. Uh, and last but not least, perhaps there would be an, I, I, I might not have thought it entirely through, but uh, um, it, it might be that there would also be a interesting case in looking at not just the lumen per watt, but a sort of uh, melanopic or non-visual lumen per watt, and then allocate that to sustainability in regard to daylight or the, the lighting systems that you have in regard to savings um, that could perhaps also be interesting, I think, to to show the value of these systems. So that was my comments. OK. Awesome. I'd love to respond if that's OK. Yeah. Of course. Um, I would say that the the sustainability the sustainability development goals are in, mentioned somehow in almost every meeting I have in Europe, whether it's about quantum, whether it's about education, 
they are becoming more and more central to almost every meeting. Uh, but in North America, I never hear them mentioned. Okay. So it's really interesting, that difference. Um, then move then, to Europe. <laughs> well, I'm living in Delft now. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I did the move. I did the move. Okay. Um, and then the melanopic per watt. So I know that BIOS uh, kind of speaks to that. And I do sometimes feel that, again, we're sort of trying to, you know, ugly sister into C Cinderella's shoe, electrical engineering, where biology is needed. And mm. um, um, so I understand turning it into a melanopic, uh, you know, per, melanopic per watt. Um, but it's such a sliver of what the issues are. Hmm. Um, but but my, I, my, my, idea, my, my idea would be that, that if you are sort of a company like you or many other companies that are here, which actually are very much into all of the research and have actually developed quite good lighting system that yeah, takes yeah. these things into account, is already embedded within the lighting, then you can use that to sure. basically sort of where the engineers understand it basically yes, it's a free true. launch yeah it's a free launch exactly yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay yeah um in, in view of time I, i'll see uh, there's a question in the chat and also marijke raise your hand raise your hand yeah thank you very much uh, sarah very uh lovely data that's actually this is what we are looking for we discussed that um uh, privately and uh, it's of course very difficult of always for scientists to translate um numbers from some studies in in um in value and uh, and i love that you share the references but i have and and i i think we need to look much more into it um uh but i have two questions actually one is when you value the numbers is this basically related to usa numbers the the rent study etc do you think it's different for europe that's one question do you have numbers for Europe? And the second one is that I see some of these references where you uh, take values, where you compare performance or something after sleep compared to wakefulness. Um, is that related to light or is that really an extrapolation? So these are more than like two questions. Yeah, good questions. Um, so the... Is it different in Europe versus US? Um, well, I think just to explain, for two and a half years, we ran a research consortium of circadian rhythm researchers from uh, Europe, North America, and Asia. And Marika, to your point, I think there's just some studies that stand out, right? So there's the Phyllis Z study on 46 minutes more sleep per night if you sit next to a window. Phyllis is very well respected. Um, and so the the difference between Europe and USA, um, yeah, it's, a, it's a good question. I think certainly work-life balance in the Netherlands feels like a vacation in comparison to New York, for example. Um, and I think there is built into uh, there is built into the culture here. Uh, first off, you know, social uh, social networks are really important for mental health, so people actively pursue uh, social uh, engagement regularly through healthy means. Um, so I think there's a lot of yeah lifestyle pieces that you know you yeah you can't really account for in the numbers that I guess would be noise. Um, and yeah, so I think at this point we're all we're all somewhat screwed, some more than less, <laughs> and and that's the approximation we have to navigate at the moment. Um, yeah, sure, well, sure, and it's very nice that you make this attempt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Th thank you. Yeah, there was a comment from uh, Torben. Scott Hansen, and especially the second comment uh, was was a question to the science advisors, science participants. Eh? Uh, how does the way the benefits metrics are presented here, yeah, lie with you? Yeah, would what would it take to increase credibility about such a model? 
can we achieve this without creating new research? Because new research, new research always takes years. So that that's a valid comment. Uh, Tore, do you yeah. want to add something to that or? Well, um, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. sorry, not me. Sorry. No, feel free to comment. No, feel free to comment. Anybody? Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. Sarah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're leveraging existing research. We did a 200 white paper review. We hired a chronobiologist, um, and she did the white paper review. That's the data that we use. And I believe you can build a model that allows for new information. And, and that should be how we all think about lighting now, is that there's a long way to go. And that, that can either be intimidating or an opportunity. And I think if we build our lighting technologies to see that as an opportunity, then you're building in the sensitivities that are easy to change as the new research emerges. Um, and then you don't have to worry about credibility. It's not a, to use lighting language, set and forget. It's a, it's a living, it's a living, breathing document. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me round off this topic. It's, it's definitely the way to go. Uh, in the group, we are already discussing this for a couple of months. Uh, we call that the social economic benefits of, uh, of healthy light, of good light, of circadian lighting. Uh, we have a, a group headed by Bruno, who couldn't unfortunately attend, but he will look at this record. Uh, and, uh, and hopefully uh, Sarah and or Joanne will join our group to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to create more substance uh, and, to, and to make it useful for everybody. Because the more people who spread this gospel, yeah, uh, that lighting is not only for vision or for energy saving and payback based on based on energy saving, but lighting is especially for curing uh, society diseases like fatigue, burnouts, um, uh, mental health problems, lack of energy, poor sleep, and so on. Uh, so that is why you should install lighting in the coming uh, decades. So thanks again, Sarah, for taking the initiative to uh, to uh, to uh, to start this work and uh, together with Joanne. And thank you very much for an excellent presentation. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Thank you.